Hello, people. This is Socrates Sun. My thoughts about the David Wood versus Daniel Hakikachu upcoming debate. Having the experience from his previous debates, all Daniel has to do is say words with confidence, confidently. If he says words confidently, irrespective of, of how outrageous is what he is saying, as long as he seems confident, Muslims will applaud him. The Muslim community, at least the followers of Daniel Hakikachu, are brain dead, sick, brain dead. Let's remind everybody that Daniel Hakikachu already admitted offensive jihad, in other words, viol viol uh, violently subjugating the world, several times already. In the interview with the apostate prophet, he said that. He made a video on YouTube. Okay. He, uh, in the debate with uh, Harry Sultan. So several times he admits that offensive jihad is prescribed in Islam. Yet, now he will debate with David Wood and he will say no, Islam is not violent. Muslims have the uh, weird ability to block out inconvenient, inconvenient information. And of course, Muslims have zero ability to self-reflect. So Daniel can say at the same time Islam is not violent, yet Islam seeks to violently subjugate the world. Okay, he can say both things. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares what this idiot says? The Muslim community will celebrate him, whatever he says. Okay. He can literally pull down his pants uh, and Muslims, ah, he won the debate. He saw him. He saw him how, I don't know. But anyway, let's see now an interview that happened a couple of days ago. And let's see what he says about offensive jihad. Yeah, so uh, let me ask a question. You were talking about Justin Parrott's Yaqeen article about jihad. So do you think that Justin Parrott in this article is defending or agrees with the concept of jihad at Tala? Mm, I mean, he explains a concept of jihad where he's saying that there are concepts in jihad that is similar to international laws. At least that's, that's not my question. Answer. My question is, does Justin Parrott accept or acknowledge the validity of Jihad at Talab? He doesn't mention it. Yes, he does. He does mention offensive Jihad. He says that this is the ideology of extremists and ISIS or terrorist groups. Can you tell me why he said that? Uh, you can share the screen if you like. Hakikatsu uses the approach of being unapologetically ISIS. The, this approach is becoming more and more popular in the Muslim community, in the West, proving that once Islam dominates moderated Muslims, they tend to become more radical. Some of popular Muslims uh, that uh, find Daniel Daniel's bold and apologetic defense of Islam attractive are Mohammed Hijab, Farid Response, Adnan Rasid, the non-radical, Sobur Ahmed, Mansur, the three Muslims, Hamza Miyad, and now Islamic defense. It's refreshing to see all these moderated Muslims in the West finding ISIS attractive. The view in Islam in some parts of West, however, failed to make this important connection between traditional Islam and modern developments, building upon centuries of bias 
some Orientalist scholars in the West portrayed Islam as an inherently expansionist and aggressive ideological religion that rejects the principle of jus ad bellum and religious freedom. Okay. This misperception is exacerbated by jihadist extremists who repeat the same, the exact same scriptural and legal arguments as anti-Muslim Orientalists. The result is that common Muslims living in Western societies are not only considered foreign, but even dangerous members of a subversive global political movement. These negative stereotypes have led to real world acts of violence against Muslims, hate crimes, blah, blah, blah. So that's one place that he mentions extremism. But let's, let me uh, just dissect that uh, quote. Let me go back. So is the question, is Islam expansionist? That's what Jihad al-Talab is. Like for those who don't know what Jihad al-Talab is, it, mean, it can be translated as offensive Jihad. It can be translated as expansionism. This is the question. Because jihad, this is what the Orientalists say. And Orientalists claim that uh, Islam is, quote unquote, spread by the sword. It's expansionist. Muslims were aggressive historically. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was aggressive. The Khulafa were aggressive. They attacked nations and groups that didn't attack them. So that's what offensive means. In case you didn't catch that, people, Daniel Hakikatsu claims that's true. <clears throat> Sorry, that's true, he says. In other words, what Robert Spencer and other uh, Islamic polemicists were claiming all along, according to Daniel Hakikatsu, that was true all along. That is what Daniel Hakikatsu is saying right now. Let me remind you now who, what other moderated Muslim apologies supported Daniel Hakikatsu. Sobur Ahmed, Adnan Rashid, the non-radical, Mohammed Hijab, the three Muslims, okay. Mansour from Speaker's Corner, who else? Let me rem let me remember. Uh, ah, Farid responds. Sajid Litpham. Okay, all these moderates agree, or at least supported this kind of extremist views. What Daniel Hakikatsu is saying, literally, that Islam is aggressive. With offensive jihad, it wants to enslave the world under an Islamic caliphate, under Sharia. This is what Daniel Hakikatsu just admitted. So the question is, does Yaqeen and Justin Parrott acknowledge that reality? Or do they deny it and say this is jihadist extremism and orientalism? And that's exactly what Justin Parrott is saying. He's saying that jihad at talab is jihadist extremism. And it's the misperception of legal arguments. This has nothing to do, by the way, with killing civilians. Really? So, when you come to Greece, to enslave Greece, let's say, you won't kill any civilians. How about all the, all the civilians that will resist you? Because in, in case you have any delusions, even old ladies in Greece will... In fact, we will just send our, our grandmothers to defeat you. Every single person in Greece will resist that, my friend. That is what history shows. Greeks, my friend, when in order not to be enslaved, they were dancing and falling through a cliff. So, you won't kill any civilians. Really? Okay, Daniel, let me tell you now what, 
will actually happen. Okay. You will come like you came in all history and you will receive the dick. That is what will, ha will actually happen. But let's forget about that, the aggressive part, and let's go to the philosophy. Yes, you will enslave people. And this is, in fact, what your scriptures say. If they don't, either they pay the tzizia willingly, feeling themselves subdued, either you kill them. Okay, that is what your scriptures say, Daniel. But please, please go on. Do you, do you understand this? Yeah, but to play the devil's advocate a little bit. No, no, first let's talk about, before you get to devil's advocate, okay. like, I want to understand, because in your video, like, that was my whole problem with your video. I don't have a okay. problem, like, with criticism of me, with the article, whatever. I, I, in fact, have gotten a lot of constructive feedback over the years, but it has to be accurate. And what was okay. disturbing about that, what you said, is that you're making it, like, I, or a Muslim skeptic, is advocating for or defending the idea of killing civilians. Okay, let me state that in kind of an argument. Daniel Hakikatsu advocates for enslaving civilians. If civilians quietly accept his dictatorship, they won't be harmed. There is a problem, though. In the real world, that never happens. And in the real world, offensive jihad means killing millions of civilians in practice. Okay, that's the bullshit of Islamic apologetics, guys. Okay, they play with grammar. Yet, in practice, millions of civilians will be dead. So, Daniel, if I am a civilian and I'm dead, who cares if in grammar you don't really meant to kill civilians? Who cares? If I'm dead. I've never said that, watering down or that's that's completely when wrong. I say watering down, I don't mean like you're advocating for what you know they're advocating for. What I mean when I say watering down is that you don't mention it enough, if that makes sense. Like it's it, it is a bit no one so so no, that's not a part of the disagreement. That's not part of the critique. The critique of Yaqeen's paper is not, oh, they're saying don't kill civilians, but you should, you know, it's more nuanced than that. Nowhere in the paper, in, in this paper or in our response, is it on the issue of killing civilians. Because on that issue, Muslim Skeptic and Yaqeen and me and Justin Parrott, we're all on the same page. Civilians, non-combatants should not be killed. And that's actually the majority position within Islamic law. So nowhere are we disagreeing with that. Daniel, because you are from a submissive slavish cult, you, are, you, you don't have an objective balance of things. Okay? You are projecting your submissive slavish cult to other people. Daniel, in Greece, for example, freedom is higher than death. Okay. Ha Greece is higher than any Greek individual. Let me bring you back to reality. If you come to, to enslave Greece, we will cook your heart and we will eat it. Okay? Can you understand now? What Greeks, my friend, were eating uh, rats for freedom, my friend. What you are saying that no civilians will be harmed you are deluded, my friend. In Second World War, for freedom, they were putting people in ovens. Okay. What you are saying is that you are projecting your slavish, uh, submissive cult named Surrender, and you think ah, freedom is nothing for the rest of the world. My friend, freedom, you know what people did for freedom? You know what people did for freedom in the Second World War? Faces were falling off, my friend. Hands were falling. 
they were burning each other. Nuclear weapons were, were fallen. Let me show you Japan, my friend, after Second World War. It's like a football stadium. Carpet bombing. Carpet bombing whole towns for freedom. And you are saying, ah, freedom is nothing. No civilian will be hurt. That is in your psychotic delusion, Daniel Hakikatsu. Okay. And that is the problem. You are deluded, my friend. And in your delusion, you will destroy the world because nothing you think corresponds to reality. It's just in your delusive, moronic head. The problem with Justin's paper is that he's bringing quotes about not killing uh, non-combatants and he's saying that this means Islam is not expansionist. He's conflating the two issues. He's conflating the issue of killing civilians. So you'll find many statements from the legal scholars, and he quotes them. He quotes Ibn Taymiyyah, he quotes Ibn al-Qayyim. There are many statements about not killing non-combatants. You should not kill in war. Do not kill civilians, do not kill women, do not kill children, do not kill monks. This is a clear-cut established principle that the majority, the vast majority of scholars agree with. There is a minority disagreement, but the majority agree. So Justin Parrott is quoting all of those scholars about that, and he's saying this means that Islam, that jihad is only about defense. Islam is only defensive. Okay, but this now is, can this I... Is conflation, right? Okay. So Now can I play the devil's advocate? Go ahead. Okay, so you showed me the quote, but... As far as I could see, he didn't say that, you know, jihad cannot be expansionist. He said I it's mean, jihadist extremism. Yeah, extremism, but put extremism the, could put mean... On the, put on the screen so people can see the quote while you're talking okay, about okay. it. Uh, okay. uh, can I make it a little bigger? I want to read something. Okay. The view of Islam in some parts of West, however, failed to. Okay. Okay. Building upon centuries of bias, some Orientalist scholars in the West portrayed Islam as an inherently expansionist and aggressive ideological religion that rejects the principles of uh, just ed bellum. By the way, can you explain what this means, just ed bellum? Like just like, war theory or just cause for war, just okay. cause for belligerence, aggression, okay. or okay. You know, warfare. Just a bellum and religious freedom. Uh, this uh, misconception is excavated by jihadist extremists who repeat the exact same scripture and legal arguments or anti-Muslim orientalists. Okay, so basically what he's saying is that the arguments that made by the extremist and the orientalist is similar right but he's not nearly really he saying the exact that... same he doesn't say similar he says the okay. exact same okay okay so he says uh, it's the exact same argument uh but he's not saying the islam that doesn't mean that uh, jih uh jihad talab is like uh, it's not like he's not denying it because you're, you're, you're claiming so he's that... He's calling himself a jihad extremist. He's saying that I agree with the jihadist extremists and the orientalists. Yeah, but you, you said in your paper that uh, he denies it, right? He does deny it. This is denial of it. But he's not denying it, though. He's just simply saying that uh, the extremists and they're making the same argument. How is that denying? So he's calling himself an extremist. How's, how does that mean he's calling himself an extremist? He's saying this view of expansionism is what Orientalists and jihadist extremists advocate. So you yeah. don't think that's a denial of expansionism? Why? No. Well, jihadist extremist version of their argument is very different. Like, right? No, he says it's the exact same. No, I mean different than how the scholars say it is. 
Uh, like for example yeah he by misquoting scholars he claims that islamic scholars have only accepted defense jihad as defense and the quran and the sunnah only advocate jihad as de as defense but he didn't say that though <laughs> like like yeah, with right. all the respect bro like, you like, need, like you he's writing is very it. big the yeah, passage you quoted is very vague. No, no. I, what I cited here for you is not vague. It's very clear. You're just giving a very bizarre interpretation. Like, oh, no, he's not denying. How is this bizarre? Expansionism. No. Here, how how, how did what I said bizarre? Find other statements. If that wasn't clear enough for you. I mean, it's getting kind of ridiculous and bizarre. I thought you were like a good faith. You're trying to understand these issues. If you're if you want to just assume, like, give this crazy interpretation that no, no, bro. is the explicit Please. work on the page that we're looking at. We're all looking at. Let's look in the comments about who thinks that Justin Parrott is not denying expansionism here. And that is the problem. Moderated Muslims who claim Islam is peaceful and commands for just war have no sound the theological backing. In contrast, the people who are speaking the truth about Islam, like Robert Spencer, Daniel Hakikachu, and Bill Warner, have all the backing of proper Islamic theology and history. Moreover, we see a very clear tendency when moderated Muslims are in an Islamic confident environment, they tend to agree with the radicals. As we see Islamic calling doing right now in this interview, and popular Muslim apologists doing after every debate Daniel Hakikachu supposedly wins. So, we have two facts. Fact number one, Islam is inherently aggressive and evil. Fact number two, when Islam dominates, moderated Muslims get assimilated by the radicals. And then, of course, we have the other fact. Islam makes people do bad social behaviors. It's not bad Muslims give Islam a bad name. Islam is the problem in this equation, not the people. Muslims are good people, victims of an evil ideology. So this is an addition that he made after our critique, because his original paper, as is mentioned here, was jihad as defense okay the whole paper was about jihad is only defensive okay okay wait 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 can i read that yeah go the, ahead. the part you quoted uh okay the original version of this uh sorry can you make it bigger i can see it okay the original version of this uh whenever i expand it it becomes this view is this better oh uh it's fine uh, the uh, the original version of this paper entitled Jihad as Defense, uh, Just War Theory in the Quran and Sunnah has been revised, expanded, and updated based upon constructive feedback from trusted colleague and the author's continued research. By the way, he doesn't mention you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so the, the paper was published 2000, the original version was published in 2017, I believe. Yeah. And then our critique for Muslim skeptic came and then five years or not five years, but three years later, right after our critique, then it's magically updated because of constructive feedback. <laughs> Where was the constructive feedback for the past three years? <laughs> yeah, I think that's a little uh, problematic. OK, so what other part you wanted to show me? So look at this. This is how he defines jihad. Okay, guys, let's read that. Jihad in Islam or war warfare in defense of life and Muslim religious rights is legally analogous to the modern just war theory as is, as is enshrined in international law. In other words, Daniel Hakikachu says that's not the case. Jihad in Islam is not warfare in defense of Muslim life and Muslim religious rights. 
And in fact, it's not analogous to modern just war theory. Okay. This guy, Daniel Hakikachu, is set to debate David Wood in this issue. What, is more ag- what religion is more aggressive and violent, Islam or Christianity? How on earth this person will defend that Islam is not violent or aggressive when he admits Islam is violent and aggressive? What he will do? Let me tell you what he will do. He will say some bullshit. He will talk fast and all Muslims will applaud, applaud him. Okay. He, will, he will say some Muslim uh, bullshit and all Muslims will applaud him. This is what will happen. What happened with uh, the apostate prophet when he said that slavery is better than employment and Muslims Yes, sir. You won this interview the same way he did with Harry Sultan when he admitted all these kinds of monstrously immoral stuff, yet all Muslims celebrated him. The same he will do with David Wood. Okay. Guys, it's not his fault. The, f- the fault is of, of the Muslim community. Okay. If your audience are uh, blind sheep, okay, whatever you say, doesn't matter. Okay. So it's not his fault. His audience is the fault. The problem is in the Muslim community. Thank you very much. <laughs>